What is going on everyone? Jelly from Disaster Time here and today is a great day because it is our first ever podcast and I'm super pumped. I'm a little bit nervous to be honest because I'm gonna just be rambling because I just sort of, I just kind of wanted to get behind the mic and just start chatting, you know, just talk about, um, or actually, you know what? I really wanted to get a little bit nostalgic and talk about the things that I did growing up, um, especially in the middle of the bush. You know, I grew, oh, well, I mean, if you've seen any of my videos before, I'm sure you've seen it. Grew up in the middle of the bush, surrounded by like no other houses. So my pastime was literally building cubby houses or, or literally just going for bush walks in snake infested bushland but we just did it because that was the normal and you know I look back at it now with like um you know my kids and I'm like would I let them do that like would I let them just go off in a bush walk in the middle of the bush when they're like I don't know eight and stuff it's crazy and then I remember right I remember staying at my cousin's house when I was probably like 14 15 right and he lived in the suburbs and we wanted to go you know a couple of suburbs down to the shopping center and we're going to catch the train. But mum was a big like, hell no, there's no way you're getting on that, that goddamn monstrosity train. You know, you don't know who's going to be on that. And I'm kind of like, you know what? People aren't bad. Like that's, there's nothing to worry about. I'll just get on the train with me cousin. So I did naturally. Um, and eventually, you know what? That me mum and dad, they found out and I did get a grill and I got told off. And now like I look back at it and I'm like, wow, that, that is something that I probably, um, probably shouldn't have done, like, without them actually knowing, you know, getting on the train and that. But anyway, that's completely different to going in the bush, like, in a sense, you know, there's strange people. But I guess in the bush, you got, like, you know, what if I got bit by a snake by myself? It's crazy to think about, but this is, it's just a completely different time. I feel like people are different these days. But yeah, I loved bushwalking, like... We would spend hours just traveling through the bush and I found some pretty weird stuff over the years. Like, I mean, naturally I found like, you know, animal carcasses and, and stuff like that. But I remember one time me and my mate, we were walking for God knows how long. Like we used to take cameras and stuff and try and find things. Um, and sometimes, yeah, we found some pretty weird stuff. But this time, because we were kind of near farmland, um, we were coming up to like, I guess the back of like a property and... I kid you not, it was like a pit of like bones and skulls and like it was just, it was literally a pit of that kind of stuff that was just there. It was the weirdest, like craziest thing I've ever seen. Like, I was like, what is this? Who does this? Why is there a pit of animal bones everywhere? I think about it now and it's probably a farmer who's got like dead cattle or something and he's just like, doesn't know what to do with it and he's just, oh damn, throw it in the pit. And then he just tosses it in the pit. I don't know. So that, I mean, that was really weird, but okay. I'll tell you a story. So growing up, um, in those early times, like internet was really fresh. Like I remember before internet, you could just jump on the internet on your phones and stuff. This was way before like phones had internet, you know, and you know, it was all dial up. So you had to make sure mum wasn't on the phone or something like that. And you had to get onto the internet and you had to connect it all and then your phone wouldn't work and it'd make all these buzzing sounds and it was crazy. So internet was relatively new. It was new to the sense, especially for a kid that you just, I mean, even now kids, but kids are a lot more savvy to what is and isn't real on the internet. Back then, well, at least for me and my mates, everything was real on the internet. And this was a time of like creepy pastors and spooky stories and all that kind of stuff that people would just post on the internet and you would just believe. Uh, me and one of my mates, you know, this is when we were probably like uh, 12 years old or something like that. And we got heavily into Yetis and, you know, the abominable snowman, but not in the snow. Um, Sasquatches, you know, that kind of stuff. And there were some crazy stories and I would totally believe them because like, I remember, like I was already scarred from Yetis and stuff, right? I mean, like now I love them and I totally like... Consider me a Yeti hunter. Like, I want to find those guys hiding out in the bushes doing their mystery Yeti stuff, you know? But me and the family would always go to um, a family friend's for dinner, right? And they would have dinner at, like, 11 o'clock at night. Like, basically midnight because they were too busy drinking and, and all that kind of stuff. So, dinner was always super late. And I would sit there um, by myself or with my little sister sometimes. And we would just play, you know, their um, family computer. And it was just installed with a whole bunch of crazy random games, right? 
There was this one in particular game, and if you grew up in these times, you've probably heard it. I think it was called uh, Ski Free or something like that. And basically, you're a little ski dude, and you're going down a mountain. There's jumps, and you've got to watch out for, like, s- snow dogs and, and stuff like that. And, like, this is, like, you know, this is a long time ago, boys and girls, so the graphics aren't great. But eventually, and inevitably, a snow mon- uh, snowman, a snow yeti, right? Uh, snowman, whatever would come running out and just gobble you up. Like, you could dodge it, but you bet your ass eventually he's going to get you, and he'll come back out again, and he would just gobble you up, like, super quick, and then just, like, rub his belly and all that. And it was bloody horrifying, and I loved it. Like, I loved playing it, but my God, did that ever spark that initial, in the back of my head, like, fear of yetis, right? Anyway, so we're fast-forwarding to the internet and Googling stuff and looking at spooky stories. We would read ones about... Yetis, right? Things that they would do. You know, if a town had a Yeti, they would have, like, they would walk the streets at night and look for people walking around and and do all that kind of crazy stuff, right? And a sign that there was a Yeti in your town was that in the bushland near your town, you would find a um, a stick in the ground with, like, a skull on it, like, you know, like, or some bones or something like that attached to the stick. Like, they would plant sticks into the ground. So, every time you'd find a stick just stuck in the ground that means it was a Yeti around, right? Crazy, I know. Like, that's just bizarre. And I remember, like, every time we'd bushwalk and if I saw a stick standing up, I'm like, oh my God, holy shit, dude, 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 look at that. There's been a Yeti here. I kid you not, there's been a Yeti. I've read this on the internet. It's 100% real. Spooky stuff. So, my mate um, lives, uh, I guess, like, on the back of, like, a little bit of bushland, right? Um, Not too far from mine where I said before I lived in, like, the literal, like, acreage of forest land. Like, there's dumped cars in there and everything. So, anyway, so we're walking past this dude's house uh, into the back bush and I find a stick in the ground with a animal skull on top of it. By God, was I terrified from that point onwards. I'm like, holy shit, that's the ultimate Yeti sign. There's Yetis in, in our town. There's yetis! We cannot go outside, we cannot do night walks, we cannot bushwalk anymore. There's literal yetis there. Oh my gosh, you bet from that point onwards I was terrified of yetis because I was convinced, 100% convinced that they were evil and they were in our town. And boys and girls, don't worry, they're not evil. I'm not going to say they're not in our town, but they're 100% not evil. Um, You know, I want to believe. I want to believe. But yeah, so the yetis are in our town. I did not sleep well because I like our bushland, like you just look out on the balcony and it's just bush forever, bush forever. And this is around the time when, um, I was really into toy story and stuff. So toys were real to me. Okay. When you're not looking, they're doing things. And like, you know what? I'll be a hundred percent honest with you. There's a little bit inside of me now that if I see a toy that's like left outside, like a poor doll or something like that, a part of me inside's like, Oh, that poor thing. I better bring it in so it doesn't feel alone. I kid you not. I can. I just can't help it. Like, I know it's a bit of plastic, but like, I don't know. Childhood, man. Like, things that happen as a kid, like, they stick with you. Even if you get in, like, become an adult. You know, I mean, I always tell myself I'm going to be a kid till the end. Like, I always want to be a kid. But yeah, it's actually crazy how much that's true. There was this one night when I left my, um, I think it was like, actually, I actually do think it was like a Buzz Lightyear from McDonald's, a Happy Meal or something. And I left it down way down the hill from the house in this big, like, dugout area where my dad had, like, borrowed, like, a, um, what do you call it? The truck things with the big scoops, like a tractor thing. And he dug out, like, a lagoon sort of thing, you know, hoping that the rain would fill it up and make a dam. And I left my toy down there because it was one of the areas where you used to always go and play. And it was, it was dusk. Like, it was very close to getting dark. And I remembered it and I'm like, oh, no. There's no way I can leave that toy out there. Oh, shit. But what about the Yetis? What about the Yetis? I'd have to be quick. Like I would have to run the quickest I've ever run because that, that toy, that is right on the borderland of the bush that just goes on forever and ever and ever. But I can't leave it there. Who knows what will happen to the poor thing? What if the, what if the, the pigs got it? What if the, what if the Yeti got it? So I had to go for it. I remember walking down there and I was just like, I was psyching myself up. I'm like, come on, here you go. And have you ever done that thing when you're like sort of walking back to a house and, you know, you're a little bit eerie because of the dark or something like that. 
and in your head you imagine a T-Rex is coming or something like that. Yeah, that was me. I picked up that toy and I turned around and I bolted it. I did not look back. And in my mind, all I could hear was this like this, this thump, 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 as if I was being absolutely chased by this gigantic Yeti man. And oh my God, did I ever run. I've never felt so, well, actually, you know, I probably have um, felt that shiver up my spine before. It was absolutely mental. But I, you know what? I got back. I got that toy back and, and we stayed in that house. And as much as these days, if I look back at it now, I would love to live in that house. But back then when I was a kid, like it was terrifying living in the bush and, and reading those things and stuff. Like it was, it was definitely um, a little bit traumatic, especially when your dad's mate in the middle of the storm would come up to the side of the house where the windows are and like pounce at it with the mask on when there's a flash of lightning and absolutely scare the bejeebas out of you. There's building character apparently, I don't know. But now if you talk to me about Sasquatch, oh you bet I'll have a conversation with you about Sasquatch and we'll talk in depth about Sasquatch. Like I love the idea of this mystical, um, like I wouldn't even majestic, like mythical creature that lives out there and he just hides and his senses are so high that he can just you know, vanish from people and leave no trace, basically. Like, that idea, that mysteriousness in the world, like, I need that. I thrive off that because that is awesome. And I really do believe, well, I like to believe that out there there's things like that that we just cannot comprehend, that we cannot even see, that we, even if we were looking, if we did not actually, like, fully believe, then we're just never going to find it. You know what I mean? So, I reckon they're friendly. I don't reckon there's anything to worry about there. But I, I mean, in all honesty, I reckon that a solid 80% of my childhood was just walking in the bush or going for bike rides and stuff like that. And and I love it. It is so different to this day and age when, you know, I guess that video games and TV and tablets are just fully taking over. And I know that that's not, you can't say that for everyone because there's there are people out there that don't do all that kind of stuff. But it, it's different. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I loved playing video games and watching TV as a kid. Like, I was that kid who was so obsessive about um, not missing an episode of Digimon or Dragon Ball Z that I wouldn't even go and stay at a friend's house, at my cousin's house. Like, doesn't matter what it is, I'm not going to go stay there because if I miss that morning episode, you know I'm going to be gutted. And this was a time before Netflix and, and all that kind of stuff. So you had to watch it on Channel 10 at 6.30, it's going to start. And if you miss it, well, you've missed the episode. You just, there's no way of like going back and watching it because it's gone. You'll have to wait until they replay the season or something. And that was horrible. So me, I love to record them. Like this is back with VCR. So not DVD. You had the big videotape, you chuck that bad boy in and you'd have to get someone to, um, you know, hit record when it's going to start. Yes, you'd get the ads and all that kind of stuff. But man, like I had it. I had like a stack of like 15 VCR tapes with Dragon Ball Z and Digimon and and I'd have written on it, like, Digimon episode one through to five or four or whatever it was. And I never missed a beat. And I remember one morning, um, this is the kind of stuff that just sort of sticks with you. So I remember one morning I stayed at my cousin's, but I made it very, very clear. And I told dad to tell his dad and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, listen here, mate, I'm watching Digimon and you're going to record it. I know you're going to be getting up for work, but I'm sleeping in. I'll be sleeping in till like 7.30 and it starts at 6.30. So when you get up for work, you hit that record button. And if you don't, I'll cry. I'll cry real boy tears. And guess what? I get up that morning. I'm excited to watch me uh, VCR tape of Digimon. Only to realize that he never hit the record button. It didn't record. I didn't even know what episode that was. That was absolutely tragic. And I'll never forget it because... That was my thing. That was my pattern. There was two things that I would do as a kid that if I did not get done or I didn't have with me, I would not say to a friend's house. I would not say at anyone's house. I do not want to miss my morning cartoons. Saturday, Disney, I don't care. I don't care about Saturdays and Sundays. It's the Monday through to Friday, even on school holidays. Cannot miss them. And the other thing is toothbrush. I hate the dentist. I hated it as a kid. And if I don't have my toothbrush, I'm not staying at anyone's house. Because I'm not going to the dentist. That was me. That was me in the nutshell as a kid. Loved me cartoons. Loved me toothbrush. Anything else I could do without my blankets. And I could do without bedding. I'll sleep on the floor. Just make sure you bloody record Digimon for me. 
So yeah, I guess you could say I was a little bit obsessive with that kind of stuff, but that was me as a kid and that is still me now. Like I have me routines, I love me uh, collectibles and there's there's a, there's a reason why I've never really got into like alcohol or, you know, I don't smoke is one because it's bloody unhealthy and disgusting for you. So don't ever do it. But two it's because I'm a massive addict with that kind of like, well, not that kind of stuff, but with collecting and stuff like you give me one Pokemon card and I'm an addict to that. I need to collect the Pokemon cards. I was that kid. I collected marbles. I collected crazy bones. I collected Pokemon cards, Digimon cards, Star Wars cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, like cards for everything. I collected K-Zone and, and D-Mag and Mania magazines, Disney adventures. I had so many and I still do. And now these days being like a grown ass man, I collect pop vinyls because nostalgia just punched me right in the teeth. And now I collect them. I've got like me Dragon Ball Z ones, me Spider-Man ones, me anime ones. And I freaking love it. It is so great to just have something to collect. So yeah, my cupboard, if I open the door next to me right now, it is literally just full of like old collectibles. And like, remember the old Simpson Tarzo things um, with the, the Velcro back and you had the ball on the string and you had to try and catch them. Like I got a tub of them, right? Just chilling. Do I ever really use them or look at them or anything like that? Or the Dragon Ball Z spinning top ones and stuff like that? Hell no, but I've got them because I collected them and I do not want to let them go because I don't know, nostalgia. And it's like holding on to that bit of your childhood or who you are, um, is super important to me. So it's like, it's often when you grow up that people would change. Like everyone always changes constantly all the time, but holding on to that core essence of who you are as a person, what made you, you in the first place is very, it's just, it's important. I think it's super important. Like, you know, I've got tattoos of, of like the cartoons that I grew up with. You know, I've got me Pokemons and me, my Sonic, like I loved Sonic the Hedgehog. He was like one of the first video games I ever played was Sonic, right? Um, go to me mate's house. He had the Sega and we would play Sonic and it was the best thing ever. Like, you know, eventually I'd love to get, you know, you know, some Crash Bandicoot up in there, a bit of, bit of Donkey Kong. Cause you know, that's me jam. But till then we'll just, li we'll just deal with what we've got. But anyway, I was so obsessive with this kind of stuff that, like I said before, I used to believe and try and be what I was watching on the TV. Like I can definitely understand that what you see really translates into the person you are and, and how you act. Like I'm going to, you know, what, I'm actually going to talk about this in a, a different video or a later point, but some of the stuff that I used to watch in the nineties and early two thousands was really whack. Like, do you ever remember like, um, I think it was called like trap door, right? I'll put a picture up if, if you're watching, uh, right. But trap door, that was super whack. Like that was weird, like spooky weird. I was terrified of this show called, um, Horrible Histories, I think it was, or, oh, I can't remember. Um, hold on one sec. I really got to look at this. Oh my God. Okay. I just found it. There was this show called Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids and I could not watch it. Like I wanted to watch it, but like, basically it was like this old bloke and like a spider thing and they tell this story and like, for example, okay, what's something that I could think of? Um, someone who would suck their thumb, right? And they would end up losing their thumb in the show. Like it'll get chopped off or something like that. And it, I remember like that show, it was probably one of the reasons I had issues with like the dentist or something like that, because that show was totally messed up. I'm going to watch a few of these episodes and we're going to, you know, we're going to watch it together. And they were just really weird. So yeah, there was ones like that. Um, Plasmo. If you ever, if you watch this show, uh, called Plasmo, and you look at the creatures on it now, it is really weird, like super weird and stuff like that. So the, the stuff that we would watch as a kid in the nineties was just like nothing like what you'd see on the TV now. Like what, what do kids watch now? Like Teen Titans and uh, Cocomelon? Like, I don't know. It's just crazy. So anyway, Dragon Ball Z, huge influence, used to try and turn Super Saiyan, scared all the people um, in the bush if they were walking. But there was this one day when I went to school, right? And I had my hair um, styled exactly like uh, Gohan, right? I had this, the spiked up and a little bit down to the side, right? Or like a fringe sort of thing. I got teased so bad about it. Like, oh, what are you doing with your hair, Nathan? What is that little bit? Oh, did you forget to gel it up or whatever? You know, with the, the thick gel. 
I was so cut that I remember going and literally cut, get scissors, and I cut the, <laughs> I cut the fringe off because I was like, oh, they don't like it. Oh, you know, bloody hell, like that's crazy. But yeah, I definitely took all those shows and all that kind of stuff seriously. I loved it, you know? I still do. I still watch Dragon Ball Z. I'd love to rewatch some Yu-Gi-Oh! and Digimon and see if it sort of lives up now, like 20 years later, to the standards that I kind of, or the pedestal that I kind of put that on. So I'm probably going to do that at some time. But anyway, I think we're just going to end it there for today. I just wanted to kind of think out loud and get some ideas out there and kind of see how I feel about this whole setup. I probably would prefer to sit down and I'm probably going to set this up to sit down for next time, you know, prepare a couple of stories and topics to go over. But this was just like a a little bit of an introduction, just sort of getting my own thoughts out there and just a little bit of what it's like, a little bit of nostalgia for you all. And for me, I love it. I love nostalgia. But anyway, look forward to some of these. We're going to go check out Plasmo and stuff like that soon. I would, I really... You know, I'm, I'm really interested to see if these shows hold up to this day and see what the fuss was about, what was so messed up about that grisly tales for gruesome kids. Like, you know, even just looking at the picture is kind of like giving me horrible flashbacks and ugh, it was disgusting. Anyway, have a good one and we'll see you all next time.